And hello again, it's Michael from Fujifilm. On October 18th of 2022, there was a big news item about a collaboration between Fujifilm and Adobe. And it was about something called Frame.io. So let's explore a little bit about what Frame.io is and what it can do for you. Now, in this particular episode, I'm going to address this to mostly those of you out there that are still photographers, because you probably have not heard about Frame.io, so I'm going to help you understand it better. If you have been in cinema and television production for the last few years, you probably already know about it, and you probably know how valuable it is. It's a wonderful system that was designed for collaboration uh, in almost real time or in fact actual real time between on the set and post-production and uh, executives that are somewhere uh, completely in another part of the world. So in cinema, you can actually upload files right from the set. They can go to an assistant editor who can review them and actually make comments back to the set in real time. A producer sitting uh, in an office somewhere miles away from where the shoot is happening can make comments uh, and sit back and enjoy what's happening. Um, people in the sound department, the wardrobe department, all these people can collaborate as the uh, movie is actually being created. And that's what Frame.io is all about. It's a collaborative uh, system for passing information uh, about image making. It's also a very, very handy uh, asset management system. Okay, now, how does this help with still photography? Uh, so first of all, it's not tethering, okay? Tethering is where you're shooting directly into your local computer, uh, usually by hardwire, and you're frequently, you're using the laptop to control the camera. That's not what this is about, okay? So let's envision a potential user scenario. Uh, you have been hired by a big art museum in your city for an emergency rush job to do a product shot for their new holiday catalog, which is going to publish tomorrow. They need these images tonight, now. You don't even have time to rent a studio. You're going to have to set this up at home. But you're going to need to get approval from uh, the actual director of the art museum, from uh, a, a stylist who can't uh, make it to your home in time, um, by a, an art director, okay, that they use on a regular basis, the manager for the museum gift shop, the webmaster for the online museum gift shop, so all these people you're going to need to get feedback on as quick as possible for them to say, yes, that's a keeper, no, that's not. And oh, here's a problem. That art director is actually on a plane right now uh, crossing the country from one meeting to another. So all these people are going to need to give you feedback in real time. Let's have a look at how that might work. All right, so here's our small tabletop product setup of this pretty Ukrainian tea set that we're going to get images to go into the gift catalog. I have my laptop screen open for you to see here in real time into the Test Frame IO account, Fujifilm XH2S camera, the file transmitter hand grip, and you can see there is a folder here already and it has the camera serial number. So you can have different devices connected into different projects. You can have different devices connected into uh, different kinds of folders and the, the system will create separate folders for each of those devices. You can remove a device if you so desire. All right, and more on that in a minute, but let's shoot a couple of images. So I want to do this in real time. So here's sort of a medium shot and you can see something has happened on that folder. And here is a tighter shot. And here's one just of the kind of just one of the sugar bowl. Okay. Um, I'm going to open this folder of the camera. And you can see here the picture is showing up of the T set. Okay. As I actually capture them. 
Uh, let's say I make a mistake. Let's say by mistake I include part of the camera, the computer here, or my art director reaches in and is going to tweak the props while I actually grab an image. Well, okay, I can easily uh, select these and delete the bad ones. Also, I can click on any of these and open it in a large window view. I can type comments in the bottom and comments will appear on the right hand side and anybody who types a comment, all those comments will be showing up in real time. This is like I said, especially helpful for that art director that's on an airplane that's still traveling back into the country. All right, let's talk about some more use case scenarios. All right, so now a big caveat to what I've just shown you. As of right now, mid late October 2022, everything I just showed you is completely, totally preliminary. All right, again, the actual firmware to make this happen will not come out until spring of 2023 and between now and that time there's going to be a lot of development going on between Fujifilm and Adobe to make this process much much quicker. Now remember I was at home so the files are going from the file transmitter to my home Wi-Fi up to the internet into the frame IO database and so you saw it actually went pretty quickly uh, but A when the software in the camera is optimized, it's going to be a lot faster. B, in a commercial studio or even in your own home, you might have much, much faster internet than I have. Also, there are different connection possibilities. Now, I was doing this wirelessly, but the file transmitter hand grip has an Ethernet port on it. I could actually be hardwired into a modem into my uh, home uh, network and it could be going a lot faster. There's also an option to connect via USB right into your smartphone and use your smartphone as a transmitting device, not by having to have any kind of an app loaded, but by actually transmitting directly into uh, the internet from your phone. So again, what I showed you was preliminary, but you could definitely see that it worked and it's really very cool. Um, so uh, how can this work in other scenarios? Well, on a fashion shoot, obviously, is a very, very useful scenario because you can have the designer that could be on the other part of the world and watching the shoot happen in real time and going, you know, something in particular about the way a dress moves or maybe you should uh, hide a particular detail because uh, that dress wasn't fully finished. Um, again, art directors. Uh, how about portrait sessions, okay? So let's say you are doing a family portrait session and uh, you've got part of the family on the other side of the country that wants to watch as this happens. Well, what if you had your studio assistant uh, watching the files upload in real time and tagging some of those pictures as approved, the ones that look the best, and can invite a local lab or a local camera store to uh, temporarily join that account and they can see which ones you've approved. They can go and download those files. They could actually print those files uh, and they could go and FedEx some, you know, five by sevens or eight by tens on the same day and a person can get them printed beautiful, you know, photographic prints the next day in some other part of the country. How about a wedding situation? Now, as I showed you, that one folder uh, had the particular camera connected to it and it told you what serial number it was. Like I said, you can have multiple cameras connected into different projects. You can choose which cameras are part of which project. So if you are a wedding photographer on a job and there are two or three of the photographers roaming around, back at the studio they can be watching and they know which photographer shot which image. Um, and again, they can be going through and approving stuff and marking things for, uh, for printing, for example, at a local lab. And what if there's a grandmother on the other side of the world who couldn't make the trip to the wedding? Uh, 
uh, you could have the grandma give her account to the uh, access to the account who can be watching the photos upload in real time and could be commenting, I love that one, I love that one, and your studio assistant can add that to the print queue. You could deliver a stack of prints to the bride and groom by the time the reception is even over. Okay, now you say, I'm a wedding photographer and I shoot RAW files all the time. Okay, so here's a way to make that work. You can shoot RAW and add JPEGs. You can say add small JPEGs and shoot those concurrently. The Frame.io interface in the camera will allow you to choose which kind of files get uploaded. So because of bandwidth problems, right, RAW files can be a problem because they're huge. Uh, and if you don't have super fast Wi-Fi at whatever wedding venue you're working at right now, uh, it's going to take forever to upload. So you can choose to have only the JPEGs upload. And that is good enough to make 5x7, 8x10 prints. Uh, so you can see there can you can have a lot of fun with this. Now, of course, like I said, this was developed in a cinema ecosystem to start with. So for those of you who are videographers who are not used to seeing something like this, you're going to like that too because yes, you can upload video in real time. As you're capturing it, your camera can be sending the uploads. Now like RAW files with still photos, obviously that's a lot of bandwidth and they're big. So what you would do is have our camera do proxy files while it's recording the original high reses and again when the software is fully f uh, functioning come spring you'll be able to choose whether you want to upload the original ca video files or just the proxies because the proxies might be all that your editor needs or again for approval for somebody that's uh, out of town the proxies are all they need to see they just need to see if it's in focus they just need to see what the lighting looks like uh, and they will be happy. Okay, so um, these are some screenshots of what we hope uh, the interface will look like. We're going to make it as seamless and easy as possible. Again, these are just preliminary renderings, but it could be as easy as just finding the frame IO line item in the menu and hitting OK, and it will connect. Now, by the way, this is all very, very secure. Not just anybody can join a project. The camera has to be authenticated on the back end of the platform. So somebody has to admit that camera into the project. And the way this works is there's a six digit code that gets transmitted between the receiving end and the camera end. And those six digit codes have to match and you have to let the camera in. So it's very, very secure. And the files and those codes and all that are all being uploaded with an extremely high level of encryption. Okay, Adobe has worked very, very hard to make this safe, 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 so you don't have to worry. Um, and of course, this is also a very, very handy asset management tool because you can uh, organize projects very, very well within the Frame.io uh, framework. Uh, okay, last thing is, is on the web page, if you want more information on the on our uh, Fujifilm-X.com web page that's dedicated to the Frame.io uh, integration, at the bottom, you can put in your email and you can ask for more information and we will keep you up to date as developments happen. So, thanks for your time. See you next time.